Hey guys, so if you recently saw, we did a houseplant house tour with a Hoya lover based out of Stockholm, Sweden. Her name was Tareel. If you didn't check out that house tour, you have to see it. I'll throw up the link above and also below. She has over 400 Hoyas growing in her home, which is just astounding. And of course, I used it as an opportunity to ask her some tips coming from the Hoya expert herself. However, I couldn't actually fit all of those in the house tour, so I wanted to play this little video for you because she gave some excellent tips that we weren't able to fit into that video. The first one, of course, was on propagation, since Hoya are so easy to propagate, or at least as a whole group, they're relatively easy to propagate. And I actually did a Hoya care tips and propagation video, which you could check out, and I'll send that link up above as well as below. However, here are some of her tips. Hoyas and very few other plants in the world make roots, aerial roots mm -hmm. on the stem. Mm -hmm. You see the small knots here? Yes. And this one is easy to, to root in water. A hoya with a soft stem surface mm -hmm. and hairy, mm -hmm. they can easily start to rotten. Interesting. So be a little bit careful. Okay. And when you cut, it's better to let the, the surface of the cut dry up some hours before you plant it, so you so don't get like bacteria a, or... Right. So almost like a succulent and like yes. you're letting it suberize a little bit yeah. and harden off. Yes. Um, and then you said that you, um, that one's easy to root in water. Do you typically root in water or do you typically root in a substrate or both? Both. Okay. And, um, and it's probably based on which ones you think from observation mm -hmm. actually go in the, water. These with a lot of aerial roots, mm -hmm. they I put in water because okay. it's mo more easy. It's Here I have a... a, a plastic thing with many different things in. Ah, yeah. And I put uh, this leka in, and in its water below, mm -hmm. because then they are not falling. Well, That's a really good idea. So these are like little lava stones or pebbles or yeah. pumice yes. that you have that-, that To support them so it. they're not falling out. Right, and then when you transfer the water roots into the soil substrate, does it have any problem rooting no. then in the soil no. substrate? So it's very but easy. I don't need very much m many roots before I right. plant it. Right. I don't wait until I have 20 like this. Right. Three, four, five like this is yeah. enough. In general, Hoya are pretty easy to propagate, but Tareel had a very good tip on just being a little bit more patient when it comes to certain species. I think for beginners, multiflora and pletoria and lasianta is easy to grow. That's it. They are not easy. They are easy to root, but it takes many weeks. Okay. So they have to have patience in the beginning. Right. But when I had the first one, I think I had no leaves left. I had right. a piece of stem like this. Yeah. And I put it in a mix of perlite and water and with plastic around yeah. and left it, I think, almost two months, wow. seven, eight weeks yeah. before I got any roots. Yeah. And when I planted it in about the beginning of June and the first week in August, I had it in flower hmm. and six pe new pairs of leaves. Hmm. No, six new leaves, and then three pairs. Are, um, are you getting better propagation rates in the spring summertime versus in what's, not, what's happening now, which is like cold fall, For cold me, winter? it's easy as I have so, so much at the, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, lights. Lights, lights are yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So uh, they are growing all the year here. Hmm. And many are flowering all the year. Hmm. But mostly up here in North when we have it dark in the winter time. Right. We have no flowers, not okay. many. But a few species mm -hmm. are o mostly only flowering in the autumn. Yeah. Like Tomsoni, Linearis, and a few more. Okay, and are those ones that prefer a little bit of cold? I think it's something with the daylight. Okay. I, I'm not sure why. Yeah. One of the things that I often get asked about Hoya is all of their tendrils that they kind of push out because sometimes they don't actually have leaves or they have little tiny leaflets on. And everybody's always wondering, will it actually put out a leaf? What should I do with that tendril? Should I cut it off? And of course, I wanted to ask Tareel what she does. Yeah, that's one of those things where the, the, a lot of people ask about their Hoyas sticking out the tendrils and they're like, when is it ever going to get leaves? Yeah. Do you, 
just are you just patient and you allow them to get leaves when it wants, or is there a way that you could stimulate more leaf growth? But you can look here mm -hmm. at the node. Mm -hmm. If you have the small leaves coming, yeah. then you should wait for them. Okay. But if they are gone and you have like a scar yeah. instead for a leaf, then it's better to cut it because they will. It's no fun to have one leaf here and the next three meter away. Yeah, that's a good. That's a really good tip. Yes. And all, all, everything that is dry, like it is on this one, yeah. it, I cut it just bit above a node. I can go and get scissors. Just a millimeter above where mm -hmm. it is dry. I think I have one more here. This one is not dry. It's like a little haircut. <laughs> a haircut, yes. So one of the things that you don't want to be confused about is actually where the inflorescence comes out of because that could also be a brown tip. So don't cut that off. That is something that we actually go over in the houseplant house tour with Tareel as well. Okay, guys, so I hope that those are really helpful. You could see why I wanted to put those in there because I think Tareel is just such a wealth of knowledge when it comes to Hoya, and I definitely wanted to tap in to those tips and share them with you.